Praise the Lord. We want to welcome you back to the third episode of the Gospel on Fire. The first one was in December to prepare you. The second one was in a new year to prepare you. So today we're going to do something a little different. Of course, you know the Lord is our strength. Okay? And the Gospel on Fire is designed to stimulate your Christian walk, to keep you on fire, okay? So today what we're going to do, we're going to talk about a topic and the subject called the Gospel on Fire, and that's going to produce something called, we're going to talk about forgiveness, okay? Forgiveness, that is the topic that we're going to talk about, forgiveness, okay? You have to forgive, okay? So let's get a prayer real quick. Father, we just come, we thank you, Lord God, for your gracious hand, your love, your joy, your peace, your truth. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray that this word, we pray that this encouragement, Lord God, will bless you, Lord God. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you're doing. Bless the people out there, Lord God. Let them know it's not about me, it's about you, Lord God, that they could be blessed in their lives by your word and your inspiration. This channel belongs to you, Father, and we ask you to use it to bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, welcome again, 2024. This is our first, again, this is our second broadcast of the new year, but our third one for the gospel on fire. So today's topic, we're going to deal with forgiveness. Today, we discussed forgiveness um, in our church today, and we dealt with a real important topic of forgiveness because you have to forgive in order to go forward. Now, I know a lot of you want to have success today, but success starts when you forgive, okay? So let me just give you a little bit of information on that real quick for forgiveness. Okay, let's go right. First of all, you have to understand that forgiveness all started when you were small. Okay, when you were little, when you were growing up, you know, you would fight with your brothers and sisters and friends and family, and your parents would tell you, forgive your sister, forgive your brother. But you didn't really understand what was going on with it. What you understood was, okay, I got to forgive. Okay? So what happens is that over time, situations happen to you when you were little. Some people have gotten molested. Some people have been done wrong by certain individuals. Um, individuals have stolen from them. Um, individuals have uh, did things to them that they wasn't happy with. But what I want you to understand today concerning forgiveness is that it all started with sin. See, sin, once sin entered the world, then now the need for forgiveness was needed, okay? Why? Because as human beings, we all are imperfect. We are all human. We're all flesh. You know, we come into this world flesh, okay? Now, we're supposed to be in the spirit, but we don't know the spirit when we come into the earth, so what I want to do is I want to open this up for you a little bit so you can understand what I mean when I say of a spirit, a soul, and a body, okay? So let's go right here right now to the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.23. I want to open that up for you because here you're going to understand about when I say spirit, soul, and body when I say these three are one, Okay? So here's what happened. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Let's go right to it. Okay. Now, 1 Thessalonians says, chapter 5, verse 23. Now, here's what the verse says. It says, and the very God, now, and the very God, and the very God, God of peace, sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved 
blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in 1 Thessalonians, the Lord opens it up to show you that you are really a spirit in a human body trying to understand the experience of life. So there are three of you when you come into this earth, okay? You know how people say, me, myself, and I. Or people say, um, you have three names, okay? But you don't really know who they are. So here's what happens. When you're born into the earth, when you come in, you come in as a physical body, and you're coming to the earth. Now, when you come in, you're only operating on two. You're operating on your body, what's in your flesh, and your soul, okay, which is governed by your brain, okay? It's directing traffic. Oh, if that makes sense, I'm going to process it. Oh, wait a minute. I watched that. I'm gonna, your eyes watched it. Your brain processed it. That's your soul. Now, your spirit is the part of you that is invisible. You ever blow the breath out of your mouth? That's a spirit. Okay, you ever, and you know it because when you are in a, if you ever saw a car, if you, it was in the winter time, and you said, you saw the, on the glass, you saw breath. Okay, well that's life. The spirit is life. And what happens when we come into the earth, we don't know who that spirit is. Now God, now the Bible says in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. So them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So being that he's a spirit, you have to operate with him in spirit. But coming into this world, because of the sin of Adam and Eve, the Bible said in Genesis, where they were, where he was subtle, that the devil tricked her. And because of that, we they, um, the sin entered the world. And what the sin did was the sin said, you know what? Since you disobeyed me, Adam and Eve, I'm going to disconnect your spirit. So now you're going to operate on flesh and you're going to operate on what you see. And when, if you're doing that without God, you're blind. Now you can't even um, do the things that God would like you to do. Now sin entered the world, meaning that negativity has come in because the truth has been revealed that, you know what? Hey, we got a problem. So that's where forgiveness comes in because forgiveness starts in that process. So the Bible told Eve, the, excuse me, the Bible says that the Lord told Eve that because of this, I'm going to give you a redeemer. And this redeemer is going to bruise the head of the serpent. Okay, which means that it's going to get back the spirit so that now you can be whole. So he also said in Psalms 51.5, I'm going to read that for you real quick. Okay, so you would see that we're sinners. So forgiveness is hard to understand or receive it because we're sinners. Look what he said here. I'm going to open this up to you here in Psalms 51.5 because I want you to see that I'm not just rambling. I'm going to the scripture. So that's Psalms 51.5. And here's what it says. Okay. It says, behold, look what it says. It says, behold, David said, I was shaped in iniquity, and in the sin did my mother conceive me. The Bible is so sin, we come in as sinners. And the Bible said that the wages of sin is death. Okay? But the gift of life is holy through Jesus Christ. So in, all, so in other words, there's none of us are perfect. We come in sin. And the way we come in, again, we come in dead. So you're dead spiritually. You don't know who you are. So now, when someone is, so as you get older, you can't forgive people, right? You're getting older. You're mature now. So now you could keep in your heart about what uncle did, what Tina did, what auntie did, what all those people did to you early in your life, but understand because those people were imperfect and they were only operating on two, 
the soul and the body. They didn't know who the spirit was. They didn't know that God existed. So they used you sometime as a puppet. They might have did things to you that you were unhappy about or decisions have been made that you were unhappy about. But today, the Bible says that Paul was in the book of Corinthians. He said, when I was a child, I 13, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But now I'm mature. Now I'm, I'm, I'm adult, so I've put away childish things. So that meant that the spirit man has come alive. And because that spirit man has come alive, now you're whole, you're mature. Now you're, you're, you're operating on your spirit, soul, and body. And now, you, your spirit now, which may, will tell your body what to do, your soul what to do, your brain, and your brain will tell your body what to do. And when you're living like that, you're living in perfect unity with God. I want to share my story with you. For 31 years of my life, I was only operating on those two. I didn't believe that Jesus even existed. I thought it was a myth. I thought the, the sin of Adam and Eve, all that was over. So once I received him as my Lord and Savior, now that dead spirit that was dead now became alive. You see, now I received it. And now I have the mature. Now I'm whole. Now my eyes are open. That meant that God now comes and lives he comes and walk with you and talk with you because you realize that you was a sinner. I repented of my sin because I thought I was right, but I was wrong like some of you. But now that I received him as my Lord and Savior, now I'm alive because his spirit now came and it became alive and now I'm whole. And now I'm talking to God every day in my spirit. Amen. And that's how I'm able to talk to God. And now I'm living my life with purpose. I know who I am, why I'm here, and where I'm going. I'm been produced by God to live on this earth at this present time, to share his gospel and impact this society. And then after that, I go on to him forever. Okay? So forgiveness can happen once you're mature and understand who God is, that will enlighten you to all those people, all those peoples that did things to you so that you couldn't forgive, but now you can have forgiveness. Amen? That's very important. And this is what the gospel on fire is about. Amen? Very important. So once I received Christ, now I'm alive. But before I was dead, but now I'm alive. You know, and that's how I was able to forgive my child's mother because my, when I was younger, my child's mother, she actually uh, was taking me for child support and I didn't understand it. And God was showing me, he said, don't worry about her. But I had to forgive her because she didn't know what she was doing. She's still operating on her body and her soul. So what I want you to do is when it comes to forgiveness, forgive people because God forgave you. Okay, and if you do that, you're going to have peace, you're going to have joy, and you're going to have an understanding, and you're going to be, you're going to have, you're going to say, hallelujah, you're going to be saying, joy, the, the blessing of the Lord, and you're going to be just positive, and you're going to be, you're not going to be negative, now you're going to make your mistakes, but you're not going to do them on purpose, okay, and so that's how you can deal with forgiveness, you can forgive if you know that you've been forgiven for your sin, because Christ died on a cross for your sins. I'm going to read one more for you right here, and then we're going to end this. Let's turn your Bibles here to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read that real quick. Okay, in Ephesians chapter 2, and it reads, it deals with, hold on, Ephesians chapter 2. And this is when Paul had to encourage the church of Ephesus that, listen, you have to forgive. You have to understand that you was once lost like you didn't have the spirit. You wasn't alive spiritually. You were dead. You were spiritually dead. And yet I loved you. So now you have to forgive other people and love them too. 
Look what he said right here. This is powerful. Okay? I'm going to read 1 through 10. Because I want you to hear this. Okay? He said in 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's what we was. That's what he's telling the church of Ephesus. Where in in times past you have walked according to the course of this world, meaning that you walked in your eye, your sight, you walked in your soul, but you didn't walk in the spirit. You see? You didn't walk in God. He says, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. See, Satan owns that realm. The soul and the body. But if your spirit is not alive, then Satan is ruling over you. Okay? Among whom also we have had our conversations and times pass in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. We did that. In the flesh, our flesh fulfilling. And then it says, and were made nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in us in sins, have quickened us together with Christ and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See that? So now in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding grace of his, his riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus, which means that now you can see God's goodness because you're alive. Your spirit is alive. So now that you're alive, you could hear, you could receive people, you could forgive people. It's no problem. Okay? So that's how you're going to be able to forgive people. You have to have a relationship. You have to confess your sin. You have to repent and receive Jesus. And then you're going to be at peace. Amen? You're going to be at peace. Okay? And that's very important because I've been at peace since I received them. Are you at peace today? Are you able to forgive and have forgiveness for people today? If not, you have to receive him and be at peace. All you have to do is say this. Okay? Simple. Father, I come before your throne. I repent. Of my sins, Lord God. And I'm asking you, Father, to, to receive me as your Lord, as your son or your daughter, so I could have a relationship with you. And I can forgive others, Father. Thank you, Father. So once you, I thank you for receiving me as your child. In Jesus' name, amen. See, once you repent and believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, now you can be at peace. And now... You can have total forgiveness for everybody that's done you wrong because now you know God. God bless. Love you. This concludes the broadcast of the Gospel on Fire, a.k.a. Bishop K, Kingdom Builder.